What's with all the freaking combat sensors? Like, I don't really need a combat scanner. They're really not all that helpful. Uh, level 4 detection. When I could have improved sighting, that just increases my accuracy, which is actually a lot more effective. Because I don't really seem to miss. Okay, so tungsten does more damage than synthetics, but I already thought I already had something that did that. Whew, 40% shield bypass. That's pretty nice. No, not phasic rounds. Where's the other one? Yeah, it's the armor piercing that do more damage than synthetics. So I guess they just changed it like halfway through. Oh shit, anti personal rounds 4. Whatever, I'm doing enough damage. Alright, and you and this high caliber barrel. I don't think any of these other ones make any sense. Someone's yelling outside. Sounds like people are killing each other in the streets outside. Don't really know what's going on. Don't really care. Okay, she has. She, what, you still have armor piercing rounds one? No wonder if had so many problems. How about you get tungsten round five? And combat scanner won't help you at all. Uh, you can have one of those because I have a butt ton of them. And oh yeah, you can totally have that. Plus 90% shields? Jesus Christ. Rex, I've got a new gift for you. It will be glorious. Uh, there you go. Plus 90% shields. I won't have to worry about you dying ever. Alright, well anyway, let's stop wasting time with this stupid crap. Master Sabotage. You... What? You only got one point? So did you. Jerks. Alright. What else can you get? Yeah, you already have that maxed. So let's just up your throw so I can eventually get advanced throw. Now well, let's drive back and see if I can get that chest. I know it's not very interesting, but at least I don't have to stop and start and stop and start. The other thing that I thought was interesting is is that, you know, aliens inherently would be, you know, basically judged by, uh, what's it called? Ah, uh, I can't remember now. Um... God, the comparative evolution? No. Uh, I don't know. Basically, a, a type of evolution that things that do the same things will inherently look the same. Uh, the best practice uh, of it is the thylacine in Australia. It looks like a dog, even though it's related to a kangaroo. Wait, it wasn't this one. It's the one back here. Um, but it's related to a kangaroo because it does the same things as a dog. It looks like a dog. So inherently, like, you know, people always make the claim, like, oh, like, shouldn't aliens look different? Well, if they're like us, then they'd probably be doing the same thing, so they'd inherently, they'd look like us. I mean, it, that's according to life on Earth, but who knows? Polonium rounds? Really? Um, so, I'm pretty sure it's comparative evolution. Well, anyway, uh, my point is, is that in in some way that kind of idea that things you know would look somewhat similar with very f little changes would actually make a lot of sense mm, you can keep your tungsten rounds I don't need poison rounds that bad 
and Ernox. He's fine with his weapon. Alright, so... That was a waste of time. Awesome! But either way, like, I mean, these kind of factors would be pretty common. Especially if something rose to be, like, a dominant tool-using species. Of course, they'd have things like, you know, three fingers, an opposable thumb. At least three fingers and an opposable thumb. So... I mean, essentially you could get by with two, but you couldn't do as complex tasks. But anyway, my whole point is is that it is correct in a way, and in some ways it's good that they didn't think up of like absolutely preposterous species. I just think it's hard to create things that are whatever exogenic or whatever that look like they're from another planet without having them stretch too far, like, I am a sentient cloud that collects characters from Star Trek. But, I don't know. I mean, things could look completely different. And, I, I mean, if you think about it, like, in an evolution of a world... The artillery, Shepard. Yes, I see it. Ah. Uh, yeah, I forgot what I was saying, because Rex had to talk. Uh, well, when it came to worlds, you would actually see a huge difference just because of the physiology of the world. But the certain things like bugs and stuff like that would always exist uh, based on the circumstance. Like, essentially the war of nature that would create humans or human That's things. a big gun. Hope we can find the off button. There would be certain forms that would be pretty much guaranteed. And actually, the more human-like something would be, the more likely the evolutionary path on this planet would be inherently the same. Don't get hit by a rocket now, Ashley. How about we walk around them? Where were you? Perimeter clear. But even an arf artificial life form like this Geth would probably have a continued uh, spiral of technology despite, especially, I mean, it, if you look at it in their world. Ugh, I'm stupid. Um, if the Geth had, like, this hive conscious, it would probably keep going. I mean, even if, uh... If you consider them to be, in quote, sentient, they would eventually uh, gain more and more, essentially, sentience and rewriting new things, and they would actually advance a whole hell of a lot faster than we would. So essentially, we would look like the other side of the burl or the other side of uh, the Iron Curtain, so to speak. No. We're on Ashley, so assault rifle. Worthless, worthless, worthless. Alright, well, who cares? But I'm pretty sure these Geth would probably absolutely uh, I'm reading that the grid dominate is down, the hell commander. of us. On approach to the Solarian base now. Out. Ready to move, Commander. And also kind of makes me wonder, if they found all this Mass Effect technology, wouldn't each species take it in a different way? You know, take the combined knowledge for warp drives or something, but then make something completely different? Like, I mean, you think shape and design of ships and generators and stuff like that would inherently... I hate that loud sound. Would inherently be so different, um, much in the same way. 
uh, like uh, things like Japanese made airplanes and Russian made airplanes turned out to be very different than American made. Except you'd be looking at a planetary scale, so I mean really you'd discover the first of these markers and then after that it would all be people changing and tweaking the technology. Fine, I'll get out and kill all you stupid geth. Also, I don't think a, a giant space council could really do much. Like, it really wouldn't have much of an effectiveness, considering how vast. Who is firing crap at me like this? That's a sniper. Lost. Nope, it's a destroyer. And I destroyed it myself. Rally. Before I get owned. What are you buttholes doing? Come on. Stick to the wall. Hmm, a crate. Good to know. Well, that's fine. After this mission, I'll uh, go ahead and change stuff out then. I'll probably off screen all my selling because it's really not all that interesting. Just to make things easier on you. I guess there's going to be more of those jumping guys in here. Save. Ooh. Hard decryption. I don't think so. Well, that was kind of difficult. Oh, here we go. Fuck you. Uh, let's use the Omni Gel. I don't care. Yes! Shut your mouth! I don't care about it. Get out of my face. I can't read what's there. Anything else in here? No. Let's open the gate. That did it. We shouldn't have any more trouble reaching the camp. Have we had trouble reaching the camp? Because I haven't really experienced that yet. I mean, the, sh the ship that I ride around in, the Normandy, really is just like an interplanetary school bus. I mean, it, it, it's not like it really has used its weapons or flexed any amazing military might. It's like a... I mean, I know, I guess it's supposed to be a stealth ship or whatever, but I think they at least have, like, some freaking missiles or lasers on it or something. Something of use. Okay. So there's the camp. Vroom! Drive. Faster drive. So, they came out with a new monster. It's tea and lemonade, and it's called Rehab. Commander, Normandy's touched good. down at the base, but it looks like we're grounded. The Solarian captain can explain when you get here. Okay. Seth Green, you should be grounded for letting the monsters in your closet eat your stepdad. 
You heard me. How close am I now? Well, I'm close enough now that we can wait till the next episode of Let's Play Mass Effect, where we explore the Solarian camp with me, Mark Dice. See you later.